Hello and welcome to Down to Earth, a podcast created by the environmental charity Hubbub. This season is all about fashion, because would you believe it, the fashion industry produces 10% of all carbon emissions and clothing production has roughly doubled since 2000. Alongside that, one garbage truck full of clothes is being burned or dumped in landfill every second. So we want to discover why we're buying so much and how our wardrobes impact the world around us. I'm Sarah Dival and I've been working in the environmental space for seven years, but I've always been a big shopper. I love fashion and I love new clothes, and however much I learn about what the fashion industry is up to, I still find fast fashion a hard habit to break. And I find it really difficult to know how to dress sustainably. I know I'm not alone in that feeling, so I want to bring you with me as we meet the designers, experts and change makers who unpick why our wardrobes aren't working for us and for the planet. Today, we're going to be talking to Lucy Hall. She's one of the founders of the rental app Lone Hood. Some of you might have heard of it or even used it. And we're going to be talking about how rental fits in to a more sustainable future for fashion and how renting could become something that people do every day rather than just for a special event. I hope that you enjoy the conversation. Thank you so much for having me. I've listened to this podcast for many years and very privileged to be on it. So thank you for having me. I want to kick off. We asked the, the US question of everyone, but uh, to get everyone to describe the outfit they're wearing and why they picked it. So today it's a little bit grey outside after being so sunny and nice. And I'm in the office today. I've been traveling quite a little bit because we've got lots of pop-ups all over the place. So I was wearing comfort. I'm wearing Vasia trainers, um, my mum's old jeans, which I love. They're so comfy. And a Pangaea jumper because the air conditioning in here is quite real in my co-working space. So a little cozy, a little warmth. Um, but yeah, just chill today. Very much a chill day. But you're on the sustainability vibe with all your brands and your mum's trousers. Yes. Yes. Have to be. Have to be. I should be basically rented, really, shouldn't I? But damn it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A lone hood, party dress. <laughs> right. Should have come and spent a flamboyant in front of our emerging designers. But not, not today. Quite often, but not today. And I wonder if you could introduce yourself to everybody listening um, and also give us a little introduction into what Lone Hood does. Sure. So my name's Lucy. I am one of the co-founders of Lone Hood. We are a kind of circular fashion business. We're probably most known for our app. So we have a fashion rental marketplace, um, which we launched last year. And we also have a swap shop, which we're also um, is very popular. Who doesn't love a swap shop? And um, we've been running that since about 2020. And yeah, we're all about community. So we kind of say we're a community that swaps, rents and changes fashion for the better. Because, you know, only together we're actually going to make waves in this world. We can't rely on anybody else. And wh how, why did you come to set it up? Because there's three of you who run it right, but not all of you were in fashion. You weren't necessarily working together before. What brought you together and what made you decide to launch this? So we'd all been doing different things. So actually, Jade and I are best friends for many, many years. I was a model agent working in the fashion industry and Jade was one of my models. She'd been on Britain's Next Top Model and she'd come into Models One and we were like, oh my God, we're from the same place and became yeah, best friends. And she, after like a long time modeling in the industry, she decided to go back to uni and start studying again. Cause she's really, she's very, very intelligent young girl. She's doing a PhD at the moment, but she went back to LCF and studied um, her MA in fashion futures. So really debating what the future of the fashion industry looks like. And at this point I'd left the model industry and gone to open my own restaurant, which is where my journey with sustainability had really started. You, that connection between eating locally and seasonally um, is much more prevalent. We understand that that's more sustainable and better for the planet. But then when you think about fashion, you don't even, doesn't even come into your mind. So I was thinking about sustainability in the food world. Jade had gone back to um, uni to think about it there. And then Jen was in graphic design and was working at a big retailer and had decided to leave because she too wanted to use her skills for something better. Um, Jade came to me with this idea, like, oh my God, like, let's create this like huge shared wardrobe where we can all just like borrow each other's clothes, like just like the fashion industry does for photo shoots and for like events. We we're already doing it there. Like, let's democratize that. Let's bring it to the people. I was like, oh my God, mate, this is nuts. Like, this is an amazing idea. Let's do it. 
yeah, you know, like mind's blown. And then we went to Jen, like, we've got this amazing idea. Like, can you build us a logo? And she was like, oh my God, I love it. Can I get involved? We're like, yeah, let's do it together. It's like a big party. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We were like, you know, at the pub, like chatting and like getting so excited about it. And then the pandemic hit. We were like, cool. No one's going to be renting <laughs> for a little while. Nobody's going to be wanting to go into anyone else's wardrobes. <laughs> Yeah, but we'd actually already kind of tested the idea with a clothes swap. So we'd um, actually Lottie, who used to work for you guys, came to us and said, um, Hackney Council are looking for a swap partner. Do you guys want to do it? We were like, yeah, sure. We'd like, it's all about the circular economy. Let us test our, our rental idea through a really entry level way, community driven way to exchange clothes. And that just blew up like the first day. We had a queue around the block. People, we said it could bring up to 10 items at that point, our first one. And we had like thousands of clothes just like piled, like, oh my God. Um, and from there, it kind of just snowballed. Like after the pandemic was over, we'd already got a bit of a reputation for the swaps. And then we started building out the rental app with a dev team. Um, and then from there, kind of the rest is history. I was going to say, we did a swap together. I can't remember when it was. I think it was during the pandemic, but I have the lines were insane. Like so many people were on the block. People had bought their dinner and they were like eating it in the back of the swap because they'd been queuing so they could get there. It was just like, it's such a like inclusive space. Everyone's having a really good time, but people are also like proper swappers, like serious swappers. Yeah. Oh yes, the serious swappers. And we've really built a community around the the swap space because people travel all over London to come to the different ones that we do. So we in Kensington, we did some in Peckham. And then, of course, we went to Glasgow with you guys. Um, and what we're finding is that swapping in London is, is really well known and people are really into it. And it's a little bit uh, newer for people outside of London. So it's great to go to those cities like Glasgow. We're doing something in Manchester where we can really educate people because they come back. Like, oh, my God this concept is amazing. And I'm like, yes, of course. Like how much stuff do you have in your wardrobe that you're not wearing? Loads, absolutely loads. Do you want to get rid of it? Do you want to yeah. get something new to you? They're like, yes, <laughs> let's do it. <laughs> don't want to spend any money and not want to have to take it to the charity shop or throw it away, which I guess is a nice thing about renting as well in that. Um, so we had Aniela from Community Couture on last week and obviously she rents the jacket through you guys, but that, you know, people were leaving little notes in the jacket saying, where it had been and it gets to you know pick up stories along the way and then get passed on to the next person which is the nice thing about renting and swapping that you get this kind of continuity of narrative between people rather than just it being something that sits in one person's wardrobe and it brings value back to the clothes that we wear because disposable fashion and fast and ultra fast fashion that has grown over the past decade it's it's lost there's no value in those clothes you buy them because you know you're going to wear it once and chuck it out Whereas if you're starting to wear things that actually have a story, you feel more precious for it and you kind of understand it a bit more, you value it more. I think that's something that has been lost and it is really coming back with slow fashion, with the circular economy. People are thinking, wow, like if I actually buy better and I can rent it out or if I buy better, I can swap it for something is just as good. Um, so hopefully we're moving away from that fast and ultra fast fashion, but only time will tell. We're doing our best. I wanted to talk about the app a little bit because for people who don't have Loanhood, I think there's some quite obvious differences between Loanhood and some other rental companies I could think of in that I think other rental companies I might look at if I was needed a dress to go to a wedding or I wanted something to, to go to an event is looking for kind of one-off pieces that might be out of your price range normally and Loanhood. You can tell already from the design, it's like super bright it's really young there's like lots going on and it seems more like something that people might rent for a night out or for every day or you know something a bit more uh what's the word I'm looking for rather than just this one-off special event they're trying to bring new things into their wardrobes to wear all the time yeah absolutely um that's something we've been really conscious of from the beginning of building that community and what did they want and how can we make rental accessible to as many people as possible we're all about empowering people to create their own sustainable futures. So if you tell them that you can, they can rent out their wardrobe, like I said, they're going to buy better in the long term. And how we kind of differ from the other rental platforms is um, we have a feature called Loan the Look. So you can style two or more items together into a look. So it brings in those lower price items that you probably wouldn't be able to rent out on their own. 
But if you can style them together, then you can rent someone's whole outfit. So you're renting style, not just fashion. And we also have this kind of real niche towards emerging designers and independent brands. So people that are already thinking of uh, fashion as a business and supporting the next generation of sustainable creators, because ultimately we don't really need to produce anymore. It's, it's said that there's enough clothes on the planet right now to clothe the next six generations of people. If we stop production today, we could clothe the next six generations of people. It, it's crazy. However, that's a whole industry, a whole creative industry that we don't want to lose. Like we, we love fashion and upcycling and repair are so important to the circular economy. But we know by supporting these young, small batch, local, you know, UK based emerging designers, that they are going to have a huge say in where this industry goes. And if they're going to start designing for circularity with, with end of life in mind, like how can I design something that's good for rental? So maybe it's a bit more lightweight. Maybe it's got modules so you can have multiple functions to it. So we know that supporting these emerging designers is really imperative to creating a, the future that we want for the fashion industry because it's not going to go away. It's not going to die. We're not going to stop buying things. But if we can give people viable alternatives to the current system, then we're on the right path. And I wonder if you could tell me about some of the designers that you have on Lone Hood. I've started following a couple of them now because you show them on Instagram. Um, but I, it would be nice for people to kind of get a picture of what they could get on the app. Yeah, of course. So obviously, Andy Yella was on the pod podcast last week. And she's amazing. Ethan Leyland is another uh, designer who's incredible. So he's based out of Liverpool. He did an internship with Oscar de la Renta. He's a CSM student. He makes the most incredible corsets. He made a dress for Jordan Dunn, working class guy, worked his way up. He is super talented, like bright corsets with feathers and just, and all about sustainability. He goes into thrift stores, pulls out like two pound, like 80 style dresses and like embellishes them and upcycles them into these amazing creations. So definitely check out Ethan on the app. We have a new designer called Lydia Jackson who does these amazing like twill dresses that are really flamboyant. So we have like the more kind of day-to-day -day, cool edgy pieces like Ethan Layden, but then we have these really out there, wild, bright, bold dresses. It's all about like embodying that alter ego. Um, so I just love her. And then we have somebody like Tabby who's from Reconsidered, who's an upcycler and she has things like these gorgeous pajama sets on there that you could take away to like a hen party um, and upcycle denim. And yeah, it's, it's quite a, a broad spectrum, but they're all passionate about sustainability. And how does it work normally with these pieces? So is it that you like rent by people who are close to you and you go and pick them up or do they get posted? Like how long do you have them for if somebody was going to go onto the app now and wanted to rent one of those corsets? How does it work? So the long-term goal is to build hyper-local communities. So what, what does that mean? It's like what we know about rental is it can get a bad rep for the, the postage of going back and forth. You know, it's emissions. It's actually cost to the people that have to ship it back and forth. Getting the, Relying on the delivery service sometimes can be a bit of a nightmare. So what we envision is having these creative hubs where you can drop off and pick up your items or you can meet people in person. So with Ethan, we actually met him at a, a Liverpool pop-up that we did. We hosted a two-day event, worked with the university, worked with all these amazing creatives to come in, brought some influencers, brought some local people. They got to meet each other, try on the clothes and start building, forming relationships so that then they can go into the app and be like, oh, I'll meet you at the you know, Liverpool train station and pick up my piece for tonight and I'll give it back to you next week. But right now that's not necessarily possible because we aren't as big as we would like to be, um, but we're always growing. So right now, if you go into the app, create an account, you don't need to pay a subscription or anything. It's just free. You can browse the app and then you request to rent from somebody uh, they get notified and they say, yes, it's available on these dates and they can either ship it out um, by DPD or you can meet in person. And currently the rentals are for a week at a time just to kind of eliminate any stresses that people have about those like really short rental periods where it's like, oh, I'm going to get it out next day. Da, 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 da. So yeah, we do it a week at a time um, and it's all done through our app at the moment. Amazing. And yet uh, the Ethan is who I was thinking of, who I follow. So I saw him making one of the corsets on your Instagram and then immediately he's like I have to have one <laughs> there's so much stuff on there like you were saying about alter ego it's about 
um, like stuff that I wouldn't necessarily pick up in a shop, but that I would love to wear for a night or that I would love to take on holiday or, you know, have for something special if I wanted to feel slightly more out there and different. Honestly, every time I wear something that's rented and it's like, I would never buy this piece. Like, let's be honest, this crazy jacket with a big face on the back and like wool, all these embellishments on the side. I'm not going to buy that because I'm probably going to wear it once or twice. But I, I rented it for an event we had the other week and so many people stopped me and went, oh my God, I love this. Where did you get it from? I was like, it's one of a kind. You can't buy it. It's by an incredible graduate from Liverpool John Law University called Lily Jones. Check it out. She's on my uh, Instagram, the picture of me wearing the jacket. And, you know, she's a young designer and now she's getting like loads of people asking about her jacket. And obviously I just love all the attention anyhow. I was like, thank you so much. It's amazing. Go check out Lone Hood. <laughs> a walking advertisement for, for the brand <laughs> that's exactly what i was gonna say you're just pulling people in with the cool jackets this is a little bit about what Aniela was talking about last week with the jacket where she said a woman uh was like she only ever wears really dark clothes and really beige things but she wore the jacket and she was like i feel like i'm bringing attention to the maker rather than bringing attention to myself which is exactly. a really nice way of thinking about putting on these like big bright bold things that you wouldn't normally wear um and i wonder if that kind of thing is has that brought more people to lone hood i read something that said like the rental market is going to grow by something insane like 10 percent every year until 2027 um so it's something that people are coming around to i guess in a a bigger way have you seen that since you guys started 100 percent. you can see it with resale of course you know people have been shopping secondhand for decades however technology took it to the next level and it grew and now it's outstripped traditional retail with its growth so people are now thinking that rental is just an evolution of resale it's just another cog on the the circular economy and the smoother we make that journey the easier we make it for people the, the faster it will grow and it's really an untouched market outside of london like we do have lots of customers across the country but again like when i was in manchester this weekend they're telling people about rental they're like oh yeah that makes sense but it's just getting the word out there and getting more people doing it. Because I think people have reservations about renting, like, oh, what if I'm going to spill something on it? Or what if I damage it? Or what if it gets lost in the post? There's like so many things that people get concerned about, but it's like once they've rented once and see the journey go smoothly, they're like addicted. <laughs> we find that with swapping as well. People get addicted to the swap. But it is, it's like, you know yourself, like how many times have you like damaged an item beyond repair? Stains, like if you spill red wine, like Jade sat in a chocolate cake in a dress from Rotaro, another like great rental company. And she was like, oh my God, I've sat in a chocolate cake on New Year's Eve. Um, but I sent it back and they washed it. It's fine. It's like just food, you know? It's, I think we just have to like sometimes take the plunge and try something different because if you just, it, well, you always kind of liken it to meat free Mondays. If you just do like one, one thing, one time you don't buy an outfit for something new and you rent it instead, like that's one step in the right direction. If we all do small things, it adds up to, to big changes. And I think maybe another thing, certainly what I think about when I think about renting is like, oh my God, what if I pay for this thing and it doesn't fit or actually it looks horrible on me, which I guess that would be the benefit of having something more hyperlocal where you can just go and meet somebody down the road and pick something up and try it on if you need to or you know, take it home, try it on and send it back. It doesn't have to be this thing where we're kind of going across huge distances um, might be a way to make people feel a bit more comfortable. Yeah, that's definitely an issue that we're trying to mitigate. And we do oft we host pop-ups quite often so that people can come in and try on the clothes. Um, and there's lots of more technology coming into play where you can see heat maps of your body. You can see that specific dress on other people. Um, so there is definitely things that will happen in, in the years to come, which will make the fit issue because as we know, what people do is they order multiple sizes from one place, get it sent to their house, try it on, send all the other stuff back. And as you and I know, that is incredibly damaging to the planet because they generally just burn it on the return. I mean, they're trying to redo the whole return system and know that brands are looking at charging people to do that these days but um yeah it's been going on for ages so there's a big issue around fit across the fashion industry because it's just it's not consistent what is what's a size 10 in one brand is a size 12 and a different is a size 14 it just doesn't add up so 
yeah, size is always going to be an issue. But what we try and say is like, you know, style, style it out. <laughs> if you can style it out, keep it. If not, send it back and we'll look at doing a refund for you. And how do you think the, I guess, how easy is it to change those behaviors? Something we've been talking about on this podcast is the kind of cognitive dissonance, especially for young people in that it's a generation you know, our generation and below are the most aware about sustainability, the most interested in sustainability, but also the most likely to buy the most fast fashion and consume the most because they probably under the most pressure to do so. And I think it's a really difficult time to be deciding how you want to live your life, how you want to be sustainable. You know, the options are many uh, and it can be hard to know which way to go. So how do you think we can influence people's behaviours, I guess, to make these more sustainable choices? Yeah, I think it's so conflicting. Um, and with the, the rise of social media and the mass marketing and greenwashing that's done on people, who knows what's right? People say, like, what is sustainability? Like, who knows anymore? It's 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 been, like, pulled through the mud so much. How I try to, how I see it is it's just doing those small incremental changes to your day-to-day. -day. Like, you know, if you go to Zara and buy something, like don't be super hard on yourself, but just be conscious that next time go to a swap instead or, or rent that piece out. So you're doing something like you might have bought a Zara dress, but you're going to rent it out. So multiple people are going to wear it. And just really like look at your, it's it's hard when you're a young person and you're just starting your fashion career. You're just building your own wardrobe. You probably got some bits from your mom. You've been thrifting. You've been deep hop. You don't have like, you, like you said before, you don't really know what your style is yet and you're really like trying to carve out so like swapping is a great way to just test an experiment it's free you just start you're literally just like rotating your own wardrobe so i think like find a local swap run one yourselves run it with your friends i know when i started working in an office we used to bring like all of our clothes in and be like who wants this who wants that i don't want it i need to have a whole new wardrobe by the end of the day so i think it's just doing those small things that are really accessible um and try and keep yourself educated. But I know it's so hard out there because so many conflicting messages across social media and the news and whatnot. If there was one thing that you think the industry could do tomorrow to make a change to help the planet, what would it be? Well, I think they're doing it is regulating greenwashing. I think the work that's, it's coming into, I mean, obviously Europe is ahead of us in, in this and what people can actually say a bit like... Um, how we do it with food, where things are sourced and locally, et cetera. There's an amazing platform called Fairly Made. They um, work with brands to, to build out the whole supply chain so they know who the manufacturers are and then they can then give that information to the consumer. So I think regulation will be something that, that those above, which often don't do anything to help us and everything's left in the consumer's hands, they are trying to actually regulate what people, what brands can say to consumers to help us try and navigate um, what's right, what's wrong? Yeah, I completely agree. I think transparency is actually the biggest thing that will help people to be able to make decisions. Like you say, you shouldn't be, shouldn't feel bad for whatever decision you make, but at least if we're able to like make educated decisions based on real information rather than kind of having half the story or not really knowing or not wanting to know, if we know exactly what the consequences of the decision we're making are, then I think it opens everything up. 100%. Education is the biggest weapon that we have for um, against climate change because the more that people know and can understand, the more influence that we can have. Thank you so much for listening to my chat with Lucy. If you want to go and find out more about Lonehood or join the app, I'll drop a link in the description of the podcast. And if you've tried renting an outfit for an event or you've never tried renting before and you've got some hang-ups, email in and we can talk about it. My email is hello at hubbub.org.uk. This podcast was presented by me, Sarah Dival, created by Hubbub and produced by Ellie J.